Okay, anybody has got to admit that that is an awesome flame. So, how does that equip with safety? Well, let me show you something. I mean, obviously it's pretty hot at the moment, so I need some gloves on to show you. But let's pick that off. There we go. That's the flame itself. Now, if I just do that... <laughs> Isn't that awesome? What I've managed to do is separate the fuel from the flame. So if we pick the burner off, it just goes out. Because if you knock it, it just goes out. I mean, I don't think you're going to get any safer than that, are you? Anyway, let me show you how I built it. So this is stainless steel mesh. It's one millimetre hole um, separation, and you find it on Amazon, and it's the kind of stuff you buy to protect your house from vermin. Now, of course, we've all got the internet these days, so I suspect only some kinds of vermin. Anyway, it cuts with scissors, and you cut yourself a section off. Now, I'm using the lid off a sugar jar, which is, you know, pretty cool, but equally you could use a tin, for instance. I've got here a pea tin that I cut the top off and you could as easily just put it on a pea tin and form a shape with it so that you get a protective mesh. When we've done that we need to cut around so about a centimetre or two. So we get that. Now we use some of this. This is Oasis. Oasis is awesome stuff because it wicks like you wouldn't believe. Now I'm using Oasis because I've got it but I'm willing to bet you could use cotton wool or any wicking material, but this stuff is so easy to use. Just press your tin or your can lid or whatever it is that you're going to use into there to fill up that compartment with Oasis and then cut it out. And you get a compartment filled with some kind of wicking material. Then we pop that wire back on and fasten it down with one of these. This is strapping. It's used in house construction and you can get it from any builder supplies. They use it for joining timbers together. And what we need to do is make a ring of that. So we need to cut off a section and bend it into a ring. Now when we've got our ring we need to do exactly the same that we did there, that is we stretch some mesh on and hold it on with a hose clip. Now I've used this because I have it and it's easy for me to use, but you want a ring of something that's slightly larger or the same size as the one that we used as the fuel canister. So again another bean can would probably do just as well, but it has to have a little weight because that rests on there like that. And when they rest on each other they press together the two bits of steel mesh. Now. Why does this work? Well, this works because of the Davy lamp. Now, the Davy lamp is just an ordinary open flame lamp with a metal mesh around it, and they work because the gases can get in and out, but the flame can't go past that mesh, and so it acts as a flame arrestor. And of course, we're doing the same thing here. When we light a little fire in here, that wire gets hot. It heats that wire, which heats the fuel underneath. That vaporises the fuel and the gases can pass through the steel mesh. Once you get through the steel mesh, of course, we've got heat and flame and oxygen already there. So those fuel flame, the fuel fumes burn and we get a fire. But the flame can't get past this mesh. So when we lift the mesh off, the whole thing goes out, which is really cool. Now this canister, we're going to fill it on a once only with isopropanol alcohol, although you can use ethanol and you can use methanol. And it takes a surprising amount to fill it actually. You can deal with these as either being a canister that you make, so you make half a dozen so it burns for ages, or you could put some kind of feed mecha mechanism in if you want. The easiest thing obviously is just to make a few, because I mean we're talking about a chicken wire and um, old cans, so it's not a huge amount to make a fuel canister. I say chicken wire, of course, I do mean this actual mesh. The mesh has to be quite tight, a millimeter or so is about right. We just put a load, a whole load of alcohol in there until the oasis has soaked up the alcohol. We've got our burner head and we've got our non-drip fuel. To start this, you actually put a little bit of pre-start on it, which is not much. A bit of paper soaked in a bit of alcohol. And then we light that. Oh, 
Once the heat passes through the wire, it will start to evaporate the alcohol. You'll see the wire go red, actually, and then it'll just continue to burn as long as there's fuel in that oasis. You can see that the fuel pad has long since gone, the wire's going red, and the heat of the wire is vaporising the fuel underneath. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Now, either I've invented this, in which case I'm giving it to the world, or I've stolen somebody else's patent, in which case I'm really sorry I did that. But that's how you make what I think is perhaps the safest burner you're ever going to make. In order to put this out, incidentally, if you knocked it, for example, something like that, then there you go, it just goes out. And if we want to relight it, then we have to reprime it, which just means popping a bit of paper in there a little bit more fuel. Remember this runs off methanol, ethanol or isopropanol alcohol. And I say that because those are the ones I've tried it with. I'm sure that if you tried it with some others, you might be able to get it to work on other things. But it is stunningly simple to make. There we go. <laughs> and off she goes again. It's stunningly simple to make, so by all means give it a go. Now, of course, once we've got this working, we can put this into anything. We could put it into a chimney, we could put it into a vortex, we could put it into a rocket stove, whatever you felt like. But we now have a safe burner head that can be used in all kinds of situations. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.